So, our story till now. We are talking about exceptions. So, pause the video and type in everything we've got here so far as soon as I do this return I. And I missed something on that. That's supposed to be public static int. Notes, we can make it public static void. There's no reason for it to return anything. All right. Now pause it, type it all in. These are all methods of our main class. And they're just strewn with problems. Not one of these methods is going to run if it's handed the wrong data. So down here, let's call those functions one by one. Let's call printint, but pass in something that's not an integer. And then let's do int a is equal to divide 1 by 0. I guess printin didn't even print its answer. Whatever. I guess we could throw that in there. System.out.println i. And here, let's print out a. System.out.println a. Doesn't Eclipse have a shortcut where you can type like SOP and it expands it out to system.out.print? There's something like that, but I forgot. Yeah. All right, we've called two of them. Add to. We're going to need an array of integers, and we're going to need an array of strings for these next two. Let's declare an array of integers. Ant IA equal to null. Oops, we forgot to uh, actually allocate our array of integers. And yet, we are calling add to on it anyways. That's not going to work. And then lastly, an array of strings. Red, blue, green. And the last method we're calling is the top one, which we call print in, print it. I guess it's stupid to have print int and print it in the same code. Print it, string array, and we want to print the fourth element. There is no fourth element. So that's going to blow up. And then the last thing we're going to do is print, yay, we're done. So, this code should all compile. I don't believe I've made any syntax errors. Not going to run where the hoot. So, I run it, I immediately get an exception. Number format exception for input string 2.0. Now, this is just chock full of, de of uh, useful debugger information for the programmer. A user doesn't want to see that. I don't want to see red error and, and for the program to die. So we need to enclose the risky code in try catch. Now we could put it right here around the call. But looking at our output, it said that the problem was right there. So why don't we instead put the try catch here? So we're going to put try. And I need to know what error to catch. And I forgot to save it, so I'm going to run it again. I need to undo those changes so I could run it again. You don't have to. Well, yeah, you might want to so that you could copy and paste this. That is the exception, number format exception. So we need to catch that error. So what try does is it encloses the risky code that might throw an error. And then we put a catch clause at the end of it so that if that error occurs, we can handle it without it killing the program. Catch exception ex. Whoops, not exception. You can put that, but it's way too generic. We want to be specific and only capture the exception in which we're expecting because if it throws a different exception, we want to know about it so we can fix that problem too. And then let's just print out the message for that exception. ex.get message. Mm
that may have fixed it. Why don't we put another print message as well? More for our benefit than for theirs. Above that get message, let's say error in print int function. Or just error in print int. And we might want to print the thing that was passed in. Like that. So we can eyeball it. All right, now when it runs, it's not going to crash at that specific error. It didn't print any red text. Instead, it just said error in print int. Well, I don't see the second print statement. It's underneath the exception red name. Oh, all the red stuff is messing up, messing it up, coming in out of order. And that's because this is printing to system.err oh, okay. rather than system.out. And they're kind of competing for space on the screen. But anyways, we have another one we need to fix, too, which is the arithmetic exception. Why do I always say it like that? Arithmetic. Learn English. Okay, here we go. Are we still not taping? Yes, we are. Good. Okay. So where was that error? Where's the second one coming from? What line number does it say it is? 21 on mine. Well, okay. Probably this one. The parsent. Is that correct? No, it's on the divide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah right there. Okay. So we have a couple of choices. I'll show you one choice. You don't have to type it like this. We could just do try here, catch that problem, and then return zero. Mm -hmm. You always have to figure out how you want to handle an error condition, whether you, you know. That's probably appropriate in this case because we're not going to throw an error back out. If something is void, mm -hmm. you don't have anything to worry about. But if something is supposed to return a value, you have to decide if what you're going to return since you caught the exception. And in this case, I'm going to decide that zero is an okay thing to return. So I'm going to put a try. Nope. I'm going to, an, yeah, I'm going to put the try right there. We've initialized it to zero, so we're safe there. Try this stuff. Catch our problem. Arithmetic exception. I think that's what it was. And let's just go steal those system. Get lost. Those print lines from the last time we did this. Save our some save ourselves some time. So we want two more print lines. Instead of saying error in print int, we want it to say error in divide plus the x plus a space plus the y. Now we're going to run it again. Error in print int for input string 2, that worked. Error in divide 1, 0, it told us the error. Divide by 0. We still have two, um, one, well, we have two more, but this one is null pointer exception. That's because we tried to access elements in an array of ints that don't exist. Again, we have to decide how we're going to do that. Here's another way of doing it. Try doing that catch null pointer exception ex I'm going to go back and paste in those print statements and just modify them a little bit so error in add to I don't think I'm going to even add all this extra stuff I'm just going to delete that and we're printing the message out that's fine 
Now it's not compiling. Can you guess what the problem is? I mean, I could move this over here and you'd find out. It says missing return statement. Why is that? Because if this part blew up, it immediately jumped down here and it didn't get to return. So we're just going to tack on a return zero. Realistically speaking, this is probably a bad way to handle it. Uh, if you have code like this, this is, which is supposed to be returning values, instead of catching the error there and then returning some kind of error code, we ought to be throw, passing the exception back up to the calling program so, and handling that up here in the client inside main. But we're fixing this in as easy a way as possible. One more problem. Inside print it. I'm not even seeing the error. But we can go and eyeball it. So in line number 19, why is it not showing the error? I know what the problem is. Oh, there it is. It's right there. Array index out of bounds exception. And I sure am copying that one. So try that access there. Catch the problem. Paste our two print statements in and modify them appropriately. Error in print it. All right, and it runs without dying. Still doesn't do anything good. We really ought to fix the bugs, but at least it's not crashing. These are all what are known as unchecked exceptions. Index out of bounds is an unchecked exception. Null pointer is an unchecked exception. Arithmetic is an unchecked exception. Number format exception is one. And if we'd used scanner and given it bad data, we would have gotten one similar to number format, but with a different name. Unchecked doesn't mean it's not being checked for, because we are. It means that you don't have to check it. It's not mandatory. Whenever you do division, you don't have to do a try-catch to make sure that you're not dividing by zero. You could solve it some other way. You could do if y is equal to zero, don't do it, or something like that. Similarly, every time you call, um, you know, every time you access an array, you don't have to put a try-catch block around it to make sure you're not accessing null or past the end of it or stuff like that. But you can. If it turns out to be a problem, if there's some risky bit of code that has blown up in your face before, then exception handling is one way to, to fix it. Now, there are other cases when you have to add the exception handling. You have to add the exception if it's a checked exception. And IO routines require you to add exception handling or it won't even compile. And if you watch that video, you saw some of that. You know, you try to open a file. If the file doesn't exist, it's going to blow up. And that kind of stuff happens so often that the Java developers made it mandatory for you to add exception handling for those cases. You can't just assume that 99.99999% of the time it's going to work, like, you know, dividing or whatever, and that with a little bit of, you know, help, you can make sure it doesn't happen. Because you can avoid an array out of index. You know, you could check the length of the array and make sure you're not going past it. Or you could avoid a null pointer. You could do if pointer is equal to null. You know, but you can't avoid a file not found error. Not really. Maybe you could, but you really can't. Um, you know, or if somebody, if you're writing to a file and somebody pulls out the hard drive cable, you know, that kind of thing. There's no way you could check for that. So they have made it. Two broad categories, checked and unchecked. All of the ones we've had handled now are known as unchecked. All the ones we are going to be using when we're doing file I.O. are checked. So I'm going to just add some comments up to the top of here. Checked, excuse me, unchecked exceptions are those that you do not have to support in your code. 
because with clever programming, you can avoid them in the first place. Example, divide by zero, or that was an arithmetic. Arithmetic exception. Converting with a bad string number format exception. And we did two others. Array index out of bounds. I'm just going to copy that and paste it into my notes. And whatever the last one was, something about null. Null pointer exception. All of those you could do away with. To me, the hardest one to fix is the um, parse int because it's not super duper easy to make sure that something is all digits, you know. And it's even worse if it's uh, a parse float because not only are you checking for digits, you're checking for one and only one period. But anyways, that's the general idea. These are all unchecked exceptions. Checked exceptions are those you have to support in the code or the code won't even compile. All right, you can make your own exception classes. Runtime error Runtime exception is the root class for unchecked exceptions. Is the super class for unchecked exceptions. Now that's not strictly true because runtime exception inherits from the exception super class and everything inherits from the object class. But if you make an exception yourself based on runtime exception, it will be an unchecked exception. So we're going to do that. Class my exception is equal to new. Whoop, no, 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 no. Extends runtime exception. And you know what? Rather than fumble and make mistakes. Well, let's just take a stab at it. Let's make a constructor for it. Public my exception that accepts a message, a string as a message, is a reason why. And all it does is call the superclasses constructor with that message. It's giving me an error because it doesn't know what a runtime exception is. It's funny, it knew what it. Oh. I guess it didn't know. Anyways, oh, is it runtime without a capital T? Try that. Okay, it is. We could add all sorts of special stuff, but we have defined our own exception. For whatever purposes. Now let's make a let's make some code that throws that exception. Public static void do something important. And oops, something bad happened. Throw new my exception. 
and let's pass in a message. We couldn't do something important. And we're going to add a throws clause to this thing. Throws my exception. That tells somebody reading it at a glance that this that this method here can throw an exception. So it's not a surprise to them. Since it's an unchecked exception, we don't have to add that. If it was a checked exception, if we inherited from the checked exception, then we would have to add that. So let's go add support for that <coughs> down in main. I'm going to grab that code, copy it, and paste it right above main so it's <coughs> nearest to what we're doing. Okay, so even before our call to print it, I'm going to do something important. And when I run it, this is going to kill the app. The exception, we couldn't do something important. <coughs> How do we fix that? Add some try catches to it. Put a try before that do something important. Put a catch and catch that error. Print a message out. Try. Catch my exception. Not yours. Mine. Alrighty. And let's just print out the message. System.out.println ex dot get message. <coughs> Let's see if that does it. Yep, we couldn't do something important. So you can define your own exceptions. When you're writing your own classes, maybe you want to define your own exceptions to go along with it. Why do we care about exception handling at all, besides the fact that they make us use it for file I.O.? Because error handling is a complex process where the ability to throw an exception can make the code a lot easier to write. So what if you had a function that called a function that called a function that called a function that called a function? Well, this function might have to check for an error code. Maybe you wrote the thing so that if it returns a negative one, that's an error. So this one has to say, OK, did you return a negative one? Yeah, you did. So I'm going to have to handle that error, and maybe I'll return a negative one. And then the one that called that one goes, oh, did I get a negative one from you? Well, I better do something special or not do something and then return the negative one. And so you're trickling that error all the way back up. Instead, you could throw an error from the innermost function. And depending on if you had your try and your catch in the outermost code, it would jump straight there. That way you don't have to messy up all the intervening code with you know error checking. You have to think it through. Is that what I want to do? <coughs> so, exception handling, Chapter Fifteen. We use try and catch blocks to handle, quote, dangerous method calls. Some API methods are called dangerous. They might lead to a runtime error. We've already talked about three kinds of errors. There's system error, excuse me, syntax errors when you just type something wrong and won't even compile. There are logic errors or semantic errors where the program compiles and runs. It just generates the wrong output. It tells you that it's okay to wear shorts when it's negative 20 degrees outside. And then you sue the manufacturer when you get frostbite. So then there are runtime errors. Runtime errors are things that crash the program. When the program gets into a state that it doesn't know how to handle. Um, you know, you've all, if you're Windows users, you've seen the error where it says, you know, Windows detected that application did an error and is closing the application. Some variation on that. That's a runtime error. It wrote to a memory address it wasn't supposed to write to or something like that. So parse int, if you pass it a bad string, will cause a runtime error. 
So to handle it, we use exception handling. The syntax, generally, for try catch is this. There is a third clause, which I haven't mentioned yet, which is finally. If you put some stuff between after in a finally clause, this code here, whatever it is, gets run no matter if an exception was caught or not. If an exception wasn't caught, then after it leaves that code right there, it runs down here and does this. If an exception was caught, then after it leaves that code right there, it runs down and it does this. And we'll get back to that a little later. So, they may have entered bad data, so we put integer.parsent and a try, and in catch, we caught the number format exception. And we printed out a useful error message, rather than ours where we just let the exception tell us what was wrong. Invalid quantity entered must be a whole number. So, number format exception, I really don't need, think we need to talk about it. Any of these method, methods, integer.parsent, long.parselong, etc., will be thrown. Or will throw that exception if they need to, if they can't handle it. So, depending on the size of your try blocks is an art. Sometimes it's better to use tr small ones. Try to, you know, surgical precision right around the line that causes it. Sometimes it's better to use larger ones. You could surround your entire program in main with a huge try-catch block. But the reason you don't want to do that is it makes it hard to identify the dangerous code. You know, if something goes wrong, it, your program ends, and you don't even know why. So, if a chunk of code has several dangerous method calls, you could add a separate try-catch structure for each one, but that might result in cluttered code. So to improve program readability, see if a single try-catch block is of use or whether you want to put multiples in. Now in our case, since we were fixing each method, we, uh, you know, we put in multiple calls. So when an exception is thrown, the Java Virtual Machine jumps out of the current try block, looks for a matching catch block. If it doesn't find the matching catch block, it generates an error. I mean, the exception is not handled. So even though you have one catch, it may not be the right one. Let's go back to our code. We have a exception class defined somewhere right here. Copy that. Make another one called my other exception. Change the constructor to my other exception. And then let's make that code down here. Inside, do something important, throw my other exception. So maybe we intended it so that if uh, one thing happened, one kind of exception was generated. If something else happened, another exception was generated. Let's actually do that. Let's make a parameter i. And if i is even, we're going to throw one exception. Else if i is odd, we're going to do the other one. So if i modulus 2 is equal to 0, we're going to throw my other exception. Else, we're going to throw the first one we invented, my exception. All right, you got that change, I hope? It's complaining now. Oh, I, I have made a mistake somehow. Oh, because I haven't passed in a number. All right, so I'm going to pass in the number one. It is going to catch the error. How do I know that? Because since i is odd, it's going to throw my exception, and that's what we are catching here. Great, no errors. S but if we pass in a two instead, it's an even number, which is going to throw my other exception. 
we're not catching my other exception. So it blows up. The reason why is we have a catch for one, but not the other one. And we didn't tell it that it could throw my other exception, so the uh, programmer doing this could say it was our fault for not warning him. Again, that doesn't make... Since it's an unchecked exception, we don't have to add those. So how do we fix it? We have to provide catches for both of them. Catch my other exception. And then just print out ex dot get message again. So that's a fix for that. So that worked. You know, we could put both kind of calls in here. Nah, don't even need to do that. Everybody get this working or did I typey typey too fast? I need to fix mine a little bit, but I just think I got myself in the wrong spot. Alright, just a sec. I didn't know you were here. You snuck in. I'm glad oh. you're file IO. This uh, example is getting a tediously long, so let's do file new project. Let's just call it right fun. Who knows what we're going to make it right. And we're going to use the print writer class. It's always dangerous when I take off without the sample code in front of me to make sure I'm doing it right. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to highlight that, right click on it, do show Java doc and find out what the constructor, so what it will take is a file object or it will take an output stream. PrintWriter is actually pretty flexible. You could even just create one based on a file name. That's probably the easiest. That's not what they showed. Let's do file f. We're going to have to add the import for that as well. Let's find out what kind of constructor file needs. So show Java doc, spin the little cursor forever, constructor, it takes a path name to a file. So we need a file name. String file name is equal to, let's just make it a text file, output.txt. So file f is equal to new file file name. And then print writer is equal to new print writer, capital P, capital W, passing in that file handle. We're already getting an error. It says unreported exception must be caught or declared to be thrown. Must be caught to be declared or be thrown means that um, it's a checked exception. Now, um, I'm pretty sure you can do stuff like this on Eclipse, but you can check over here to see what its fixes are. And it'll say things like, I'm going to add a throw clause. Don't do this. What it does is it adds this thing here, which says, oh, well, I'm not going to handle the error after all. I'm just going to make the guy who called me handle it. But nothing called main, so that's idiotic. I'm going to undo that. We're going to put a try catch code around there, but we're not going to do it yet. Tell you what, let's make this say, Print writer PW is equal to null and mole, null, and then have PW equals new print writer on the next line. There may be a method to that madness. I'll show you in a minute. So then try. No, we're not. We're not even doing that. It's a print writer. What can we do with it? 
you can append data to it. Yeah, flush it, close it. I like print. So PW dot print. This is amazingly fun. Alrighty. Looks great, except it doesn't work. We have to add some exception handling. File not found exception. So then the decision comes, where are we going to add that exception handling? I'm going to do it here because that one's not going to generate an exception. When you do this, when you create the file object, it doesn't actually hit the disk and do anything. It's just getting the map ready to do so. So it can't throw an exception. But this one certainly can. So try that business. And we need to catch that file not found error. File not found exception. EX. And let's not be savages. Let's be civilized and actually print out. Add the import for it. Our own error message. System.out.println could not open file and then follow by the file name. End quote plus file name. Anytime you're done with a file, you should close it as fast as possible unless you have a strong reason for leaving it open. I'm sure you've gotten into the state where you tried to open a file in uh, more than one program and it said, you know, file is open. You know, if uh, you have a routine that's copying all the files out of one directory into another, if the file is open, then you may not be able to copy it. So it's a good idea to close it as soon as possible. This is giving me another error. Dereferencing possible no pointer. The reason why is that if PW didn't get initialized because this failed, then by the time we get down here, pw.close is going to fail. And in fact, it's going to generate a, uh, its own null pointer exception. So we could put try catches around it as well. Tell you what we're going to do. We're going to add a finally clause. What finally says is no matter whether you worked or not, I want you to close it. But we're going to do this as well. We're going to check to make sure it's not null. If pw not equal null, then close me. Now it's telling me convert to try with resources. These are always interesting, these um, helpful hints that NetBeans gives you. I'm going to click it. Don't do it. Look what it did. It put a try, but instead of putting an open curly brace, it put some stuff inside parentheses. And it also got rid of the null. It got rid of the null check. Yeah. Right. And setting print writer to uh, PW to null. Right. Okay, so it did, in a way, tidy the code a little bit. Me not programming Java eight hours a day every week, uh, you know, every day. Doesn't like it that way. So I'm going to follow this. For one thing, that uh, try with syntax, I do not believe that C plus, that's C++ compatible. So I'm going to leave that alone. All right, let's run it. Well, it, all it says is build successful. We didn't do anything to show that it worked. So I'm going to put a uh, system.out.println data written message there, just so that we know something happened. Data written. OK, we could actually go and find that file if we wanted to. It will be in the NetBeans directory, in the NetBeans projects. It's called output.txt. So I'm going to go up here, open up documents, 
find NetBeans projects, find my newest one. It's called Write Fun. What I did is I had them sorted by details so that I could click on the date modified to have it pop up at the top. Open that and I see output.txt. There's my file. That ought to be pretty similar to what the video did. I don't recall the exact details of, of how they did it, but it should look pretty close. Did anyone watch the video? Yeah. Y'all yeah, rebels. Does that look close to what they did? I have a slight issue. There's an error on the catch import problem. All right, let me come look. That has some data that we could write out. So I'm going to come up here. And just to be absolutely weird, for utterly no reason, I'm going to define this class right inside a main. Don't do this, but we're going to do it. We're going to make a class called student, who has a name, who has an ID number. Under that, we're going to create a student. Student S1 is equal to new student. S1.name is equal to Beth. Anybody remember a rock group that wrote a, and sang a song called Beth? Brownie points if you know. None of you are that old. Okay. All righty. And then S1.id, it's a kiss song. Except it's a. Yeah. Yeah. Except it's except it's all soft violins and stuff. So, anyways, all right. And then his ID, Beth's ID number is nine eight seven one. Whatever. <laughs> so down here, we're not going to print. This is amazingly fun. Get rid of that line. Do pw dot print line the student's name. S1.name and then do pw.println s1.id. I'm getting an error here. Incompatible types. Oh, I guess there's an L there rather than a 1. Okay, there, 987. So there we go. We have written this data out to a file. Why is that important? Because next time we get together, we're going to write a program that's going to read this back into a new object. I think that's enough of this. Just keep this tucked away safe because this is going to be where we leave off, I mean where we pick back up the next time. Yeah, let's make a Dropbox for both of them.